So today's lecture is probably the one of the most important for the OCHEM part of the MCAT, which is isomers, identifying different type of isomers. The reason why is because uh, for me personally, a lot of these names or a lot of these different types of isomers, I never actually saw these in my OCHEM classes. We only kind of dealt with maybe constitutional and maybe um, optical isomers. That's all we kind of dealt with. But there's actually a lot more than just that. There's a lot more classifications. And what we'll see is isomers are divided into constitutional and stereoisomers. Within that, stereoisomers are divided into configurational and conformational. Within configurational is geometric and optical. Within optical is diastereomers and within enantiomers. It seems super confusing, um, but let's kind of just go over them and it should make it a lot simpler. So the first thing we're going to be doing is constitutional isomers. Okay? So constitutional isomers are probably what we're most familiar with. They're the same chemical formula and just to let you know all isomers have the same chemical formula but are oriented in a different way. Um, and constitutional isomers are, have different connectivity. Okay? So for example this one is going to be butane, this is going to be isobutane, but they still have the same chemical formula. Okay? Just different connections. The next thing we're going to be talking about is conformational isomers, okay? They're also called rotomers, so be on the lookout for that. If it says rotomers, it's also a conformational isomer, okay? So I've drawn here um, three different uh, Newman projections, okay? So remember, Newman projections are, if we're looking down through a bond, how they will look like um, three-dimensionally. And so we have them like this. So this first one, CH3s are going to be on opposite sides, so they're going to be anti- um, next to each other is going to be gauche, and this last one is eclipse. Okay, um, and so we increase in energy. So this is an increase in energy as we're going to the right. So eclipse has the highest energy level. Okay, um, so this is one type of conformational isomers: anti-gauche versus eclipse. Another type of conformational isomers is going to be um, this axial versus equatorial. So remember when we draw these um, cyclohexane molecules, we have it in these bulk configurations and they can be either pointing down or pointing up and they're going to be axial or equatorial. And so this one I have drawn on the left is going to be axial. This one's going to be equatorial. Okay, so axial is always going to be pointing vertically up and down and then equatorial is going to be at the angle. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at geometric isomers, and geometric isomers include cis versus trans and E versus Z. So the first thing we want to show is cis versus trans. Okay? Um, so in this case, we have on the left we have a trans molecule, and on the right we have cis. Okay? So trans pointing opposite from each other, cis pointing the same direction. Um, and just to let you know, trans is going to be more stable. Okay? So likewise, we mentioned that um, another type of geometric isomer is E versus Z. Okay? So E versus Z, uh, we learned about this um, last lecture, I think. Um, on Z is on the same side and E is an opposite side. Um, and Z is the most stable in terms of E versus Z. Okay? And the, the last one we're going to be looking at are types of optical isomers. And remember, optical isomers are divided into diastereomers, diastereomers and enantiomers. Diastereomers are different in, from enantiomers in the way that diastereomers differ in only one stereocenter. Right? They, they, they differ by one versus enantiomers exact opposite. Right? Enantiomer um, R versus S versus RR versus SS. Right? And they're non-superimposable mirror images. And what I did here is R is, you know, um, the configuration of it. Is it uh, rotate to the right or to the left? Stuff like that. Is it R or is it S? And then in this one is RS versus RR, so it's only different by one. RS versus SS, which is different by two. And likewise, we can have it with three, four, five um, different stereocenters. So now this is just to summarize everything. Um, so isomers can be divided into con constitutional and stereoisomers, and it's by connection, so connectivity. Um, is it connected differently, constitutional isomers, or is it not, then it's a stereoisomer. And within stereoisomer, uh, we can divide it further by rotation. Okay? Does it differ rotationally, which will be conformational? Okay? Remember, in conformational, we have anti gauche versus eclipse, and we also have axial versus equatorial. So those are the two that we need to know. Um, versus configurational, it can be divided further into geometric and optical based on a stereocenter. Is this stereocenter dependent? Then it'll be optical. If not, it'll be geometric. Okay? And within geometric, we have E versus Z, and we also have cis versus trans. 
And for optical, we have um, diastereomer or enantiomer. It's dependent on mirror image. Is it a non-superimposable mirror image? If it's yes, then it's an enantiomer. If not, it's a diastereomer. So something that they'll put on the test is they'll give you a molecule, and you'll know that, oh, it's um, a difference between E versus Z. But that won't be the actual answer. The actual answer they'll give you, it has to be geometric. So for you, what you have to do is you have to memorize this different ordering. And it's, it's going to be a pain, but it's not too bad. You just need to know anti-Gauche eclipse, axial versus equatorial, enantiomer, diastereomer, E versus C, cis versus trans, and constitutional isomer you should be fine with. Okay? So just memorize you know, those five or six things. Um, and if you can, memorize these, these greater um, category names and you'll be fine.